Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up. Welcome to the greatest show on your computer screen. Today we're diving into the wild and wacky world of Linux distributions. It's like a zoo, but instead of animals, we've got operating systems. And instead of zookeepers, we've got sleep-deprived programmers fueled by energy drinks. Now you might be wondering why should I care about Linux? Isn't that just for nerds and hackers? Well, my friend, you're absolutely right. But here's the thing. In today's world, we're all nerds. We're all slaves to our devices. So why not embrace it and join the dark side? At least with Linux, you can pretend you're fighting the system while actually just fighting with your computer. Linux is like that weird kid in school who wore a cape to class. Everyone thought he was strange, but deep down we all knew he was probably going to rule the world someday. And guess what? That day has come. Linux is everywhere. Buckle up, folks. It's going to be a bumpy, nerdy ride. All right, let's break this down for the newbies in the back. A Linux distribution is like a flavor of ice cream. If ice cream could spy on you, crash unexpectedly, and make you question your life choices. It's essentially the Linux kernel. That's the heart of the operating system, wrapped up in a bunch of software, utilities, and a hefty dose of developer ego. Think of it this way. Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, is like Dr. Frankenstein. He created this monster of an operating system, and then a bunch of mad scientists got their hands on it and started making their own versions. Each distro has its own personality, like the cast of a really dysfunctional sitcom. But here's the real kicker. Despite all their differences, these distros are all still Linux at their core. In the Linux world, that 1% can mean the difference between a smooth computing experience and wanting to throw your computer out the window. Let's start with Ubuntu, shall we? Ubuntu is like that overly friendly neighbor who's always inviting you over for barbecues. It's welcoming, it's easy to get along with, and it probably knows more about you than you're comfortable with. Ubuntu's slogan is Linux for human beings, which is a bit like saying rocket science for toddlers. It sounds nice, but you know someone's going to end up crying. Ubuntu is the distro you give to your grandma when you're tired of being her personal IT department. It's user-friendly, it's got a nice interface, and it comes with all the software you need pre-installed. But here's the dark side. Ubuntu is owned by Canonical, a company that once thought it was a good idea to include Amazon search results in the operating system's search function. Despite its flaws, Ubuntu remains one of the most popular Linux distros out there. Just don't be surprised if your computer starts asking you if you want fries with that. Next up on our Linux fashion show is Fedora, the distro that thinks it's too cool for school. Fedora is like that hipster barista who insists on using words like artisanal and craft to describe everything. It's cutting edge, it's always changing, and it probably judges you for using anything else. Fedora is sponsored by Red Hat, which is basically the corporate suit of the Linux world. But Fedora is like Red Hat's rebellious teenage son who listens to indie bands you've never heard of and refuses to get a real job. It's always on the bleeding edge of technology, which is great if you like your operating system to break in new and exciting ways every six months. One of Fedora's claims to fame is that it only includes free and open source software. If you decide to use Fedora, be prepared for a life of constant updates and changes. But hey, if you enjoy living on the edge and don't mind a bit of instability in your life, Fedora might just be the distro for you, for Ah, Debian, the granddaddy of Linux distributions. If Ubuntu is the friendly neighbor and Fedora is the hipster barista, then Debian is that old man who sits on his porch yelling at kids to get off his lawn. It's old, it's stable, and it's about as exciting as watching paint dry. Debian is the distro that time forgot. It moves at a pace that makes glaciers look speedy. If you're looking for cutting edge software, Debian is probably not for you. But here's the thing, Debian's sluggish pace is actually its superpower. While other distros are busy breaking things in exciting new ways, Debian just keeps on trucking. If you want an operating system that's as reliable as death and taxes, Debian's your guy. Debian is also known for its strict adherence to free software principles. And finally we come to Arch Linux, the Mount Everest of Linux distributions. If you thought Debian was hardcore, Arch is like Debian on steroids, with a side of what the hell am I doing with my life. Arch Linux comes with absolutely nothing pre-installed. You want a graphical interface? You'll have to install it yourself. You want to connect to the internet? Hope you know how to configure that from the command line. The Arch community has a motto, keep it simple, stupid, kiss. This is ironic because there's nothing simple about Arch unless your idea of simple is reading through pages of documentation just to install a web browser. But here's the kicker, people love Arch. They swear by it. It's like CrossFit for nerds. Those who use it won't shut up about it and everyone else thinks they're insane. So there you have it, folks. 
the wild and wacky world of Linux distributions.